Do you guys, Alexander Ribeiro? Alexander? Hi. How are you feeling in Poland? I feel great, like always. Uh, great place to be. You know, second time that I'm here in Chechen and uh, just feeling great. Uh, first time was, you know, as I was the first impression, but now it's my second time and I definitely feel like home. It's great. How many times you visit Europe? Uh, uh, first time I visited Europe was like 2000, 2000 I was a brown belt. Uh, I didn't get to come to Eastern Europe, but uh, I didn't get to visit Poland, Germany, and places like that. I was more like England, France. Uh, Sweden, but uh, I think it's my fourth time in Europe, I believe. Yeah. What do, What do you think about Belgium in Poland? Uh, you know, I've been I've been I've been seeing uh, Eduardo Rocha's uh, work here uh, for a long time, and he always tells me about uh, the coach family. And um, you know, I came here for the first time last time, and I just think uh, you know everything is the right track. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Polish. Fighters going to the worlds and, and, and getting great results, you know. But uh, independent of competition result, I just think that uh, the lifestyle and the teachings of Jiu Jitsu I think helps, you know, people in general. And uh, you know, I appreciate to hear the whole Jiu Jitsu team uh, is a very family based place, and everybody trains hard. You know, everybody trains and teach each other, and I think that's the that's the lifestyle that Jiu Jitsu brings to any community in the world. Okay, uh, we congratulate you with last year's fight in Metro Morris with Dean Liston. It was really fight, a good fight. And uh, how, what has happened with this arm lock? Uh, you know, Dean, uh, you know, he's a very tough fighter. Uh, I knew that uh, going for his neck, you know, he's really good defending his neck, so I had a strategy to go for his arms. And, uh, you know, he was willing to let his arm break, you know, and maybe I wasn't ready to break someone's arm. Okay. You know, but uh, yeah, I went for it, I cranked it, he did a tap, and uh, for a second I realized that I would have to break his arm. And uh, by the second that I guessed that I had to break his arm, he he was able to defend well. And it just so happened, you know, it happens in a fight, you know, same thing that Roger you know, he, he got caught in arm lock, he was willing to, to not tap, and uh, some guys are, some fighters are just like that. And, uh, you know, I just think it was a great fight. I, 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 you know, I was ready for Dean, and uh, I had a competition a week before that. And, um, you know, but for me, I don't care. Uh, I like to say that my Jiu Jitsu is without limits, and I'll fight uh, anywhere, anytime, anywhere. That's great. Uh, what do you think, Shander, about BOGDD with in Olympic Games? Uh, I think that's a far away dream, um, unfortunately, because uh, unfortunately Jiu Jitsu uh, is not really a unified rule system. Uh, if you go, there's Grace Jiu Jitsu, there's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's American Jiu Jitsu now. So I think it's just too many, too many variants of the same thing, and, and, and I think. Uh, to be an Olympic sport, you not just needed to have a, a certain amount of countries, but you have to have unified rules. And I think that's that's what taking a while for for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of the Gi to be able to go to Olympic Games. You know, um, it's just sad, but uh, that's how I see it. You know, uh, even uh, the Olympic Games in Brazil, uh, we expected that they put at least like grappling. You know, because I think when they put grappling. Um, you can have way more countries participating because you can get bring guys from Greco Roman Judo, you know, and make a unified rule. And uh, that was my hope. But uh, you know, see, there's still faith in there. Uh, maybe one day when I stop competing and, and I stop to do more politics into Jiu Jitsu, I can, I can start a big campaign. I think that's my, my ultimate goal after, after I quit competing okay. is to be able to unify Jiu Jitsu. <coughs> into a rule system that is good for everybody and that everybody can follow it and uh, you know and hopefully we can we can make it happen to the Olympics. That's great. Uh, how did you start your adventure in, in Jiu Jitsu? How did I start? Yes. Um, I did the Judo uh, when I was really young uh, as part of physical condition, physical education in, in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a big country with Judo too, especially on the, on the schools. And that's pretty much how I started, like wearing a kimono and stuff like that. 
But uh, I started uh, probably about maybe six months after my brother on my home state, Manaus, in the state of Amazon. Um, actually, it was, uh, it was funny because even before I started to really, you know, learn jiu-jitsu, uh, we used, the kids used to grapple in the grass. <laughs> Yeah, that was the funny because I had the, you know, I did judo, so I knew like mount, like yeah. mobilizations and, and a few headlocks and stuff. Nothing really, really like jujitsu oriented, but uh, we used to just like mess around and uh, sometimes and we, we argue with each other, we, we settle on the grass. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, one day my brother just invited me to go and he felt that I needed to get stronger and, and you know, stronger and then uh, I, I went to the academy and I haven't stopped since. That's great, that's great. Uh, what do you think, Sander, about training Jiu-Jitsu uh, in G for MMA? Uh, you know, I think it's great to train Jiu-Jitsu for Jiu-Jitsu itself. You know, um, I think when you just do for no gi, for example, you're already breaking, you're already breaking the art. You know, you already kind of cut a corner. Yeah. And there's no cutting corner in Jiu-Jitsu, you know. It's proven that uh, when you wear the Gi, you, you acquire more understanding for, for, for just grappling itself. Yeah. And you can see all the results, all the Abu Dhabis, ADCCs and all those tournaments, all the Jiu-Jitsu guys with the Gi win. And, um, you know, but of course, if you want to do MMA, you have to be more specific. And of course, you have to train uh, no gi, also. You know, a lot of wrestling too, a lot of no gi because it's more specific. You know, so there's there's details that you have to to you know to change from the gi without the gi. You know, I I always train with the gi. Doesn't matter if I'm like for the world's no gi. <laughs> I was training with the gi a day before. Yeah. You know, so it's because I've been in this for so many years. You know, I think it's important because the art. Uh, is with the gi and jiu jitsu is, is used with the gi. And uh, if you just do no gi, you're not doing jiu jitsu, you're doing grappling. That's how I see it. Even though no gi is a big part of jiu jitsu, it's just a part of it, it's not the art itself. So I think if you don't learn with the gi, you're, you're cutting a great experience in a, in a great way to understand uh, grappling itself. Yeah. So, what do you think when people? Two competitors seen on the floor in jiu-jitsu fight. I think it's silly. I just think it's a <laughs> it's a shame that people give up uh, a lot of aspects of jiu-jitsu. You know, um, if the guy sits on the ground, he go there and pass his guard. You know, and that's how I see it. You know, now we see things jiu-jitsu like double guard pull. What is this? Dur double guard pull. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's it's for me it doesn't make any sense. You know, for me it doesn't make any sense. You know, I think for example using 50-50 is great. Uh, it's not something that I do. You know, I just think that uh, is a weapon for the least technical guy to hold a, a guy. You know, and I just think that uh, when someone comes in a, in a in a match with a strategy like that, I just think it's it's, it's silly. I just think it's. It's a waste of time, you know. It's just like I said, it's, it's called competition. It's not called jujitsu. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes when I say things like that, people get mad at me because oh, it's because you don't do 50-50 and, and stuff like that. I say I do it. I just I just I just decide not to because I think there's way better ways to to accomplish a goal in competition. And I have a problem I'm fighting my third generation. You know, I'm fighting guys that that they wear blue belts, and I was a black belt world champion. And I always fought the same way, and I never had to use anything with that. You know, um, I don't know. It's just me. You know, I'm addicted to, to finish people and, and dominate people. I'm not addicted to to hold on to somebody and win by advantage. Okay. okay. You have occasion to fight with Rodolfo later on. What do you think about this guy? Uh, you know, his uh, his his uh, his accomplishments speak for itself. He's a guy that dominates everybody that he fights. And uh, I just think he's a great fighter, great, great person, and uh, you know he's a he's a good friend outside of the mat also. And uh, for me, like I said, for me coming from from not competing for a while and then coming back to competition and fight the number one guy in the world and be able to give him a tough match, almost you know able to pass his guard and then be able to to sweep him and stuff like that. I think that's uh, for me that's uh, that's a great asset, you know. And I know that uh, I still have a lot. To do in my sport, and uh, 
you know, just uh, actually we fight in the game in January. Uh, uh, the, 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 the tournament called Copa Podium is a Grand Prix, and uh, I'm in his group, so we're going to fight for sure at least once at the tournament. And then if we make it to the finals, we're going to fight again you know, in a period of like an hour. So, <laughs> you know, I just think, and not, not the team, but anybody, you know, I just I just appreciate all, the, all my, my opponents. They, they show like the mad respect for me, and I show mad respect for them. And I think it's just uh, as many Rodolfo's, as many Sean just coming into the game, it's better because I believe we play a really good game. We like to take people down, we like to pass guard, we like to dominate, and I think that's what people want to see. Okay. You have some few fights uh, on MMA. Uh, when we see you again on MMA in the ring? Um, hopefully, you know. Uh, for me, mixed martial arts would be something more, more of a personal goal. Uh, like I said, I'm driven to challenges, and uh, I did two fights. Uh, and the show that I was didn't really, didn't really pay off, and they they they, they bankrupt. But uh, I think it was a great experience. But uh, my 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 love is jiu-jitsu, and I think that I have a lot to to improve in jiu-jitsu, not just as a person, but as a teacher, as a mentor, as an example to generations to come. And I think if right now I think about the money and going to MMA, I think I'm going to cut a bridge that uh, is not is not going to be too too helpful, you know, for me. But uh, I have goals to fight and uh, for, sure, for sure to fight in the UFC. I don't see myself doing anything else. But if I don't have to fight there, I would not fight, you know, <coughs> because I think uh, you know my reputation speaks for itself, and I don't need to go and and make more fights. And uh, once I step in the ring or the octagon. It's not going to be about the money, you know. It's going to be about proving that uh, a jiu-jitsu, a good jiu-jitsu person, can involve and be great, not just as a grappler, but as striking and mixed martial arts as well. So. Okay, Sandra, you prefer fight in G or no G? Well, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy question. I, I, for sure, I'd rather fight with the G. But uh, you know, I think uh, I've done enough in both areas to, you know, it's just. I don't, in fact, I don't really prefer anything. I just think jiu-jitsu is more fun because more things can happen. Uh, it's, it's harder to stall in a sense, you know. Once you get sweaty, nothing really happens. Becoming you know, just a very physical fight. Uh, it's just different. I think it's a different feeling. You know, it's uh, it's just same thing you ask if I already snowboard or surf. You know, I think uh, the hype is just different. But of course, I I, I love my mother art. Which is jiu-jitsu, and I prefer jiu-jitsu. But uh, I don't know. I like both in a sense. So maybe I love jiu-jitsu and I have a passion for it. Okay. You are you have like aggressive style, attacking style, style from taking uh, from top. Uh, is this way going to Ribeiro Jiu-Jitsu School? Uh, no, Ribeiro Jiu-Jitsu is something even greater than that. Uh, of course, my brother is very known by his top game, judo top game. Uh, you know, my top game is really good, but I, I like a lot to play guard. Um, you know, I, especially after a while, with injuries and stuff, uh, I kind of stop taking people down just because I didn't get an injury in my neck and stuff like that. Uh, he better do something greater. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a mix between my style and my brother's style. And uh, his style, you know, I'm aggressive, but I have a more peaceful pace. You know, my, my, my game is forward, but if you pay attention to my energy, my brother's energy, he's more of a, of a grinder. You know, he'll, he'll walk just right into your face and he'll take you down, he'll, he'll, he'll smash you, you know. Uh, my game is a little more, is a little, little more like water-oriented, you know. I, I keep going forward, but uh, I like to play, you know. I'm, I'm a little more playful than my brother, you know. My brother takes competition in a very serious, serious manner. And I and, and I keep it serious, of course. But uh, I like to play, charge myself into the competition. You know? Some people, when they go to compete, they, they don't allow themselves to any type of okay. I'm not going to take a chance. You know, the difference I think between me and my brother that, that I take a little more risks than he does. You know, and I like to say that we are we are opposite sides of the same coin. You know, so and that's that's how I can say about the It's pretty much. His idea, my idea, and everything is the same with value. It's the value is the same. It's just a little different style, and uh, and I believe that uh, you know we help 
not just to competition, we helped a lot of people through Jiu-Jitsu to accomplish their goals in life, to be successful teachers, to be successful fighters or just training partners. Um, we have all kinds of people that train under us. We have businessmen like my brother, have the book at Jiu-Jitsu University that uh, even uh, business uh, business authorities that use it as an example for, 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 for seminars, you know, yeah. the business seminars they talk about his strategy, competition, how he sees Jiu-Jitsu and this is this is good. Okay, gotcha. what, what is in your club, in your school, how is preferred relation? More like competitors people or like hobby guys? Uh, we have a mix, a good mix. You know, uh, of course, when you talk about competition, I like to talk about representation. I think competition is not the competition itself. It's, it's, a, it's about put yourself in a place that you're not comfortable. You know, uh, pretty much all my students, they compete, but not all of them are really competitors, you know. I always encourage them because I think competition is a way for you to test yourself in an environment that you need to, to, you know, to sometimes not be yourself. You have to wake up, you have to make sure you're in a good day, you have to train properly, you have to achieve a goal, because a lot of people, they're, they're driven by goals, you know, and, um, and that's why I like to keep them very mellow. My club is very mellow, you know, they, they, they train hard, because you like to train hard, yeah. but uh, you know, if you're executive and you, you don't want to really train hard, we have programs for that. You can just go and, and, and go in your pace. The, the, the sparring part, uh, I encourage them to spar. I encourage them to go compete, but it's not something that I go say, "Hey, you have to," you know, because I like I like to make them feel very comfortable, and uh, and I like them to test themselves into into a non-comfort zone because I think that's when jujitsu comes into place. You know, I think jujitsu comes into place when your comfort stops. You know? gotcha. uh, what part of training is most important for you? What you your training, or training or technique, or like strongest part? Um, it's always about technique. You know, I'm a technician. I um, that's what I believe in. You know, I believe in elevates jujitsu 110 percent. Uh, you know, it just depends, but be more specific, of course, not be so so theoretical about it. It just depends on what phase are you uh, before a competition. You know, if you if you if you're in off season, for sure, you're gonna work maybe more conditioning. You're gonna get stronger. You're gonna because you can't you can't get stronger, get technical, get faster in the same period of time. So you have to to put it into a period. You know, and uh, you don't you don't expect three weeks before a tournament try to get stronger, it's just silly, you know, so, uh, you know, I think there's phases for everything, and uh, I've, I've been through a lot of phases, you know, right now, uh, my condition, for example, is more, it's more to keep my body, body health, to not get beat up, or, or just to keep the tonus, or protect my joints and everything, you know, and uh, I train a lot, you know, I, I do one thing good, that thing is jiu-jitsu, and uh, I will not, if I'm feeling tired in training, I rest and then I train hard the next day. While a lot of people, they, they, they get tired training, so what they do, they go to condition and then they go to jiu-jitsu all tired, you know? And I, don't, I just don't understand how, 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 how this goes, but uh, I'm, I'm pure jiu-jitsu. Everything you see here is built by jiu-jitsu. And, uh, you know, I'm, I don't really like to lift weights much, you know? I'm a more functional guy than a guy that gym, pushing the weight, you know, I already go to the academy and push it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's how I feel about it, just make sure you understand the period of everything happens. Okay, what is your preferred technique? The one that works, you know, <laughs> no. the one that makes the job done, doesn't care, you know, but uh, yeah, I like, I like Ellie Gray's choke, I like to choke people, I like to put it in the collars and just keep it simple. Uh, it's the first choke you learn, it's the, the one that I use a lot and uh, I have a little OCD about it, I'm a little compulsive about it. You know? I do a little bit of spider guard and it's like my hand just drives to the collar. Yeah, yeah, like so it's just it's just how I like it, you know. I like I like to prove a point, I like to prove that the old man uh, was right about everything he did and uh, I'm here to just keep his legacy. Uh, in your training, if you give some of your students like philosophy of jujitsu, mm -hmm. 
you give him this or yes you know we talk a lot you know um, because my students they really even though sometimes they, I'm, the, I'm younger than most of my students uh, they really look up to me not just as a big fighter a big champion but as someone that has a lot of experience and, and having seen the world you know so I try to make them see the world through my eyes and uh, you know we talk about life we talk about jiu-jitsu it's like I said that's the great thing about the jiu-jitsu lifestyle because you just don't go to the gym and the dojo and, and go and train and go home you, know, you, you create a big bond and I think that's the most important thing about jiu-jitsu is, is the brotherhood is the family um, it's the family bond that you that you get when you when you join the jiu-jitsu academy and uh, you know we talk about everything you know talk about life sometimes they have the problems with the wives and uh, sometimes they, it's about everything. Like I say, it's just a big family. You know, some days we're in good mood, some days in bad mood, and I think it's about to understand each other. Okay. Uh, what countries you go to your schools? Um, well, we have the Hibiru Jiu Jitsu. The Hibiru Jiu Jitsu system is in a lot of countries right now. Um, I have my own lineage, and Sal has his own lineage, but uh, we both teach Hibiru Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we're probably in around maybe 20 countries right now. Just the top of the head, uh, Ireland, France, Romania, uh, Philippines, Japan, China, Brazil, Canada. All of the world. Yeah, we have we have plenty of people, and we have plans to to go to Hong Kong. And we have plans to go to Egypt, uh, India. So, like I said, uh, as, as much as I stop competing, my, my goal is more spread spread the Jiu Jitsu throughout the world, you know, and uh, just, just is it, as I invite, you know, if you wanted to learn and, and willing to do a good program in whatever you are, just, just contact us, you know. Uh, ne next year, I'm planning to go to India, you know, it's a country that there's oh. no Jiu Jitsu, and uh, I'm actually paying to go there, I'm going to fly out there and, and start a program, because like I said, for me, uh, in my life now, it's, it's, my, it's my duty to, to, to spread the world, the word around the world, you know, even even if that, even if what it takes for me to do that, to go to pay my own pocket, I will. Okay. When I finish, can you say hello to our fans on Great News? Yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching us today. It's a great pleasure always to come here to Europe and teach you guys and have fun and get a smile and, uh, you know, hopefully see you guys next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.